business book summaries. Turning pages, changing games, where every book is a new frontier. Do you ever wonder if the wisdom from ancient times still holds value in our modern lives? Let's journey back about 80 years to 1934, where an archaeology professor at the University of Nottingham, UK, uncovered five clay tablets in Babylon. These tablets, decoded with cuneiform script, didn't contain dull historical records, but instead revealed the first-hand account of a Babylonian slave named Dabasir. In a diary-like narrative, Dabasir shared his journey of paying off debts and amassing wealth. Surprisingly, the professor and his wife, burdened with their own pile of debts, decided to adopt Dabasir's approach. Following his footsteps, they successfully cleared their financial obligations. The insights into debt repayment and wealth accumulation from Debasir's story originated from the book titled The Richest Man in Babylon. This book, a collection of enlightening tales on frugality and prosperity through hard work, became a guiding light for those seeking financial wisdom. Before we delve further, remember that we regularly share new content. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel business book summaries and hit the notification bell for the latest updates. Now, let's delve into the origins of this book. Authored by George S. Clayson, a prominent American businessman of the last century and a personal finance guru, he initiated his financial teachings in 1926. His method involved presenting financial advice in the form of fables and stories, akin to grandparents narrating captivating fairy tales to their grandchildren. Among his creations, the richest man in Babylon stood out as the most popular, Despite being published over half a century ago, this timeless piece has been translated into numerous languages and continues to be a bestseller. George S. Clayson is acknowledged as a pioneer in financial education, leaving a lasting legacy through his innovative approach to sharing valuable money management principles. In George S. Clayson's revealing book, The Pathway to Prosperity for the Affluent Babylonians is unveiled, appearing deceptively simple, saving, and investing. While these principles are straightforward in theory, their practical application is not always as easy. Let's delve into the book's wisdom on saving and investing, starting with the art of saving. At first glance, one might question the need for discussion on saving. The conventional belief is that if you earn more, you can save more. However, the book challenges this notion. It consistently emphasizes a key point, regardless of your income level, committing to setting aside one-tenth of your earnings can pave the way to wealth. Drawing from the experiences of wealthy Babylonians, this method is portrayed as both accessible and highly effective. Take the story of Alcander, a young scribe in Babylon, as an illustrative example. Despite earning a meager income through his laborious work of carving cuneiform scripts on clay tablets, Alcander found himself struggling to make ends meet due to various expenses. Despite his humble circumstances, he harbored ambitious dreams of becoming wealthy. His turning point came when he encountered a prosperous Babylonian moneylender named Agamath. Agamath, having successfully accumulated wealth, shared a valuable piece of advice with Alcander. He revealed that the key to his financial success was the simple act of setting aside a portion of his income. This revelation sparked hope in the young scribe, who had previously believed that wealth was beyond his reach. As Agamath's words echoed in his mind, Alcander began to contemplate the possibility of implementing this seemingly straightforward yet transformative method into his own life. The book illustrates that the road to wealth, as exemplified by the experiences of individuals like Alcander, is within reach for those who are willing to embrace the practice of consistent and disciplined saving. The snowball effect, as illustrated in this narrative, possesses the transformative power to elevate even a humble shepherd to the status of a moneylender. Alcander, initially skeptical, decided to test the method advocated by the prosperous Agamath, who emphasized that merely setting aside one-tenth of one's income could yield remarkable results. Alcander, grappling with a modest income, initially believed he had to sacrifice nearly all personal expenses and barely sustain himself to save anything. However, Agamath sternly rebuked him, challenging Alcander to envision the accumulation over ten years by saving one-tenth annually. Alcander's estimate fell short, but Agamath, the seasoned moneylender, imparted a crucial lesson money should not lie dormant, 
It should be dynamic and purposeful. In Agamath's philosophy, each saved coin had the potential to work like a devoted servant, tirelessly building boundless wealth. The key, Agamath emphasized, was not to wait passively for opportunities, but to actively employ saved money to generate more money akin to a snowball effect. While Alcander harbored doubts, he embraced Agamath's method, setting aside one-tenth of each payment without disrupting his normal spending. Surprisingly, this disciplined saving went unnoticed in his daily life. Though tempted by desires while walking down the street, Alcander found that the idea of saving had taken root, empowering him to resist such temptations. Alcander progressed further by investing the accumulated savings, undergoing lessons and tuition to unlock the path to wealth. Recognizing Alcander's newfound ability to make money multiply, Agamath welcomed him into his partnership, entrusting him with managing assets. Alcander's fortune soared through diligence, and upon Agamath's passing, he legally inherited a portion of the estate, eventually becoming the richest man in Babylon. This narrative underscores that the journey to wealth can commence with simplicity. Financial practices need not compromise living standards. Instead, they involve discerning necessary expenses from insatiable desires. Alcander's story, often attributed to luck, unveils a deeper truth his persistent dedication to saving one-tenth of his income demonstrated his unwavering commitment. Alcander's success, rooted in realistic goals and gradual progression, serves as a testament to the transformative power of disciplined effort. Step by step, by the time Alcander reached the age of 70, he had ascended to the position of the wealthiest individual in Babylon. Prior to this, Babylon had flourished with grand public projects such as canals and temples, ushering in prosperity and ample income for its inhabitants. However, once these infrastructural endeavors were completed, the people found themselves adrift, facing challenges and a lack of direction. Witnessing the plight of his kingdom, the king of Babylon grew anxious and initiated a plan to select and train 100 ambitious youths as the future pillars of society. Money expert Alcander was called upon to impart his wisdom on achieving wealth through diligent effort. Alcander's first lesson was a simple yet profound trick, setting aside one-tenth of income. He illustrated this principle by instructing a young egg seller to place ten eggs in his basket every morning and remove nine at night. Through persistent application of this method, simultaneously, Alcander advocated for budgeting, ensuring a comfortable lifestyle while spending no more than nine-tenths of one's income. Transitioning to the story of Davasir, originally a free man in Babylon, his life took a turn due to youthful indulgence, accumulating substantial debts that led to his enslavement in Syria. Through a stroke of luck and with the assistance of a benevolent mistress, Davasir managed to escape back to Babylon with a determination to conquer his sole adversary debt. Davasir's approach to debt repayment mirrored Alcander's path to wealth. He diligently followed a plan, setting aside a portion of his income for living expenses and allocating another portion specifically for debt repayment. Even during challenging times, DeBazer and his wife adhered to a disciplined lifestyle, using seven-tenths of their income for living and allocating two-tenths towards debt repayment. They actively sought opportunities to earn more from their savings. With a skill for handling camels, Davasir seized opportunities to purchase and resell strong camels, earning a substantial 42 silver coins. Through such endeavors, Davasir successfully repaid all his previous debts, realizing that settling debts was far more manageable than avoiding them. These experiences, etched on clay tablets, transcended centuries, resurfacing to aid a British professor couple in repaying their debts. In summary, the key to saving money lies in the simple yet effective practices advocated by Alcander and Davasir, setting aside a portion of income, budgeting wisely, and actively seeking opportunities for growth. Saving money. The notion that saving money will diminish one's living standards is a misconception. In fact, it serves as a discerning tool to identify unnecessary expenses. By adopting the practice of setting aside one-tenth of income, you embark on a journey towards wealth. Every penny saved becomes a dynamic force, working for you and generating more money, akin to a snowball rolling downhill, accumulating wealth as it goes.
The effectiveness of this method is evident in the experiences of the prosperous Babylonians, making it a compelling strategy worth trying, starting today. Now, let's delve into the second aspect, how to invest or make money breed more money. Investment Risk While there are numerous specific investment methods, the unchanging and crucial principles take precedence. One such fundamental principle that the book emphasizes is the concept of investment risk. Commonly, people associate investment with risk, believing that higher risks yield higher returns. However, the wealthy Babylonians held a starkly different perspective. To them, the idea of accepting higher risks for potential gains was entirely unacceptable. They adhered to a foundational principle that profitable investing must have a prerequisite, the preservation of capital. Consider the early investment experiences of Alcander as a case study. Eager to make his hard-earned money flourish, he encountered a business opportunity through a bricklayer acquaintance who often ventured far out to sea. The proposition involved purchasing high-quality Phoenician gems at the port of Tyre and selling them at lucrative prices upon the bricklayer's return, with profits to be shared. Entranced by the seemingly lucrative prospect, Alcander decided to give it a try, thinking he could make substantial profits without leaving the comfort of his home. However, the gems acquired by the bricklayer, though visually dazzling, turned out to be worthless pieces of glass. The poor bricklayer lacked the discernment needed for successful investments. In this moment of financial dismay, Agamath, the seasoned moneylender, intervened once again. Despite the setback from his initial investment, Alcander was not deterred. He resolutely started anew persisting in his commitment to setting aside one-tenth of his income in copper coins every month. This resilience and commitment marked the beginning of a more discerning and informed approach to investments, as Alcander learned from his experiences and the guidance of the wise Agamath. Starting from scratch. Fortuitously, Alcander had cultivated the habit of saving money over time. Restarting the process of saving was not a daunting task for him. As he ventured into his second investment, Alcander meticulously sought out experts proficient in their respective trades. His quest led him to discover an artisan specializing in crafting bronze shields. Recognizing the artisan's potential but lack of funds, Alcander took a bold step and entrusted his savings to the skilled craftsman to procure bronze for shield making. This marked a strategic capital investment. The decision proved astute as the artisan's shields exhibited exceptional quality and gained significant popularity in the market. The shields sold remarkably well, resulting in the artisan paying Alcander interest every four months as a return on the investment. Reflecting on this experience, Alcander shared a crucial principle with the 100 Babylonian youths under his guidance. He conveyed the importance of making every coin work and multiply, likening it to breeding livestock. The key as Alcander emphasized, lies in seeking the advice of experts when investing and entrusting professional matters to those with specialized knowledge. Alcander's teachings extended to his son, Nomassier. During Nomassier's youth, Alcander, rather than providing constant care, pushed him to venture out into the world independently. Armed with a bag of gold and a clay tablet inscribed with the five laws of gold that Alcander had formulated, Nomasia embarked on a journey of self-discovery. The laws stressed the imperative to protect acquired wealth, invest judiciously, heed the insights and suggestions of experts, and resist the allure of charlatans and schemes. Alcander set a rigorous rule for Nomasia's journey. He must navigate the world for a decade, relying on the principles outlined in the five laws of gold. The stipulation was clear. Nomasia had to forge his own path, demonstrating the capability and wisdom to amass wealth before inheriting the family business. This approach underscored Alcander's commitment to instilling not just financial acumen, but also resilience and wisdom in the next generation. Ten years later, after a decade, Nomassier returned to Babylon as promised. To celebrate his homecoming, his father organized a grand banquet attended by friends and relatives. As the festivities unfolded, Nomassier recounted the remarkable journey of the past ten years. Upon arriving in a new city, Nomassier found himself prey to swindlers who tricked him repeatedly, draining his entire bag of gold. However, 
Instead of succumbing to despair, Nomassier drew strength from his father's teachings. In a stroke of fortune, he secured employment managing slaves tasked with building a new city wall. This opportunity marked the commencement of Nomassier's practical application of the five laws of gold inscribed on his father's tablet. To implement the first law setting aside a copper coin from every payment Nomassier began saving diligently. Establishing a report with the owner of the slaves, he eventually seized a significant opportunity. Recognizing a shortage of metals in the area, particularly for the construction of massive bronze gates, Nomassier and the owner collaborated to organize a trade group. They ventured to distant places, mining metals, and shipping them back to Babylon for gate production. The king, in need of these exclusive supplies, paid a premium price for their metals. Nomassier's prudent approach and strategic alliances resulted in his initial accumulation of wealth, laying the foundation for more significant successes in the future. Examining this story provides valuable insights into risk mitigation. An analogous narrative unfolded in the life of Agameth's fellow moneylender, Martin. One evening, Martin's friend faced a perplexing dilemma. He had designed a new spear that greatly pleased the king, earning him a reward of 50 gold coins, a substantial windfall for him. Overwhelmed by excitement, he found himself in a quandary when his sister, aspiring for her husband to become a wealthy merchant, requested a loan of the gold coins to kickstart a business venture. The underlying question here revolves around how to navigate risks effectively. Martin's friend, caught in the euphoria of newfound wealth, grappled with the decision to lend the gold coins. This scenario prompts a thoughtful examination of the balance between supporting loved ones and ensuring sound financial decisions, shedding light on the intricate nuances of managing unexpected windfalls and potential risks, putting the friend in a difficult spot. In a delicate situation after hearing his friend's dilemma, the astute moneylender chose not to offer a direct response. Instead, he shared a fable about a farmer who possessed the unique ability to understand animal speech. In the story, the farmer overheard his ox complaining to the donkey one evening. The ox expressed discontent about the strenuous work of plowing from dawn to dusk, contrasting it with the donkey's leisurely role of carrying the master only when needed. The ox, feeling unfairly burdened, suggested that it feign illness the next morning when the slave comes to yoke the plow. Succumbing to this advice, the ox followed through, resulting in the donkey working tirelessly to replace its friend. However, this act led to a permanent silence between the donkey and the ox. Morrison, the clever moneylender, elucidated the morale of this fable to his friend, emphasizing that while helping friends is commendable, one should exercise caution and not overextend oneself or assume the burdens of others. Drawing parallels to the friend's situation, Morrison's indirect advice urged thoughtful consideration of the potential consequences before making any decisions. Applying this wisdom to his lending practices, when faced with lending requests, he made accurate assessments of the borrower's repayment capabilities and insisted on collateral for added security. Years of experience had taught Martin that the safest loans were extended to individuals whose existing assets exceeded the loan amount. The second best approach was to lend to those with a solid combination of personal credibility and earning capability. In essence, the overarching theme was clear mitigating risks and ensuring successful lending practices were timeless truths. Alcander, too, had emphasized these principles in the academy, underscoring the importance of prudence and calculated decision-making in the realm of lending. This fable and its applications showcased the nuanced understanding that both Morrison and Martin possessed, reaffirming the enduring nature of these principles in financial dealings. Safe Investment When it comes to safer investments, Alcander, in his wisdom, specifically highlighted the significance of real estate. Investing in property, particularly owning a home, was underscored as a secure financial move. Houses as fully valuable assets, the resonance of this insight across ancient and modern times, spanning East and West, is palpable. Whether it is lending or home ownership, the underlying goal remains consistent, ensuring a steady and secured future income. In essence, the stories recounted above converge on a fundamental principle, the importance of investing sensibly and prudently.
The cautionary note is against blindly chasing high returns while disregarding associated risks. The emphasis is on reasonable profits, sufficient for projects that can deliver expected returns. However, prudence in investing does not guarantee significant returns. Nothing in the financial realm is absolute. The imperative is to avoid unnecessary risks when investing, but this does not translate to perpetual hesitation and indecision. The book posits that to earn more from investments, caution must be balanced with decisiveness. While seemingly contradictory, these traits are, in fact, complementary. Examining counterexamples from the book sheds light on this delicate balance. Returning to Alcander's experiences at the Babylonian Academy, a tale shared by an elderly merchant provides valuable insights. The merchant, in his youth, had the opportunity to develop a large barren tract of land beyond Babylon's walls. His father suggested this plan, envisioning the installation of three large water wheels to lift canal water for irrigation. The wasteland would then be transformed into arable fields, subdivided into small plots and sold to city residents for farming, resulting in tremendous profits. Unfortunately, the merchant, enchanted by the allure of beautiful eastern robes and reveling in luxurious spending, failed to participate in the plan in a timely manner. The profits from the wildland development exceeded expectations, leaving the merchant with deep regret for his indecision and hesitance, illustrating the consequences of allowing good opportunities to slip away. A middle-aged livestock trader also shared a tale of a missed money-making chance. After spending unsuccessful days searching for camels outside of town, he returned to Babylon thoroughly discouraged. One evening, finding the city gates closed, he had to camp outside overnight with his slaves. During this time, a farmer who was also locked out approached him. The trader, unable to count the exact number in the dark, hesitated to act, not knowing if the farmer's claim of 900 was exaggerated. These stories underscore the delicate balance required in decision making avoiding unnecessary risks while not allowing hesitation and indecision to cause missed opportunities. Summary The middle-aged trader, insistent on accurate counting, decided to pay the farmer only after tallying the flock in daylight. Unfortunately, as he slept, the city gates opened the next morning, and four merchants seized the opportunity to rush out and purchase the sheep flock from the farmer. With the city under siege and facing a food shortage, the merchants offered three times the original price in their haste. The farmer, recognizing the urgency, promptly sold them the sheep without hesitation. By the time the middle-aged trader awoke, the opportunity that was rightfully his had slipped away. This narrative highlights the fleeting nature of opportunities and the consequences of indecision. Opportunities often arrive unexpectedly, and our initial instinctive judgment, particularly on a specific evening, is frequently the most accurate. Yet, it is our indecision that all too often leads to missing prime chances. When genuine opportunities present themselves, hesitation becomes fatal. The book underscores that decisiveness is a key attribute that tends to win the favor of Lady Luck. In the realm of investing, it posits that drive is as crucial as risk awareness. In summary, the pathway to building wealth involves grasping two essential principles, saving and investing. Saving, far from lowering living standards, setting aside one-tenth of income sets individuals on the road to riches, with every saved penny having the potential to work towards making money breed more money, akin to a rolling snowball. This approach, evident in the practices of wealthy Babylonians, proves to be both easy to practice and highly effective. When it comes to investing, the book advocates for sensibility and prudence. Mitigating risks instead of blindly pursuing high returns is the recommended approach. Reasonable profits are deemed sufficient for projects with expected yields. Simultaneously, the narrative emphasizes the importance of drive in the decision-making process. Recognizing opportunities and seizing them decisively play a pivotal role in earning the favor of Lady Luck. These enlightening methods provide valuable insights for those planning their finances in the present day. We're keen to hear your thoughts on our content. Feel free to share your opinions or recommend books in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel business book summaries and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest summaries. 
Thank you and have a wonderful day.